So I was just watching the news, uh, all, well, RT, and they were talking about the massive protests going on in many countries, but one that really stuck out was what's going on in India. And they have 200 million Muslims that are not going to be given citizenship. Um, citizenship will only be given to Hindus and Christians. And you know, everybody's up in arms because India is supposed to be a secular state, a secular government, and nobody knows what's going on. Why is this happening? Well, like I spoke about in one of my other videos, secular secularism doesn't work in a harmonic society, and neither does a partial or a large majority of people with very opposing ideologies such as Christianity and Islamic. It's not hate speech, it's just a fact. Their ideologies do not fit with Western values and nor do they fit with Hindu. A lot of them they just don't and this is becoming a large problem in a lot of places and one thing that it's coming becoming a very massive problem is the radicalization in prisons we're having a lot of prisoners being radicalized in europe and here but the governments don't have a clue what to do they have no idea what they're going to do with these people that are just serving two, five, ten year sentences and then when they all get out, what's going to happen? They have no idea what to do. They've come up with these long drawn out plans of they're going to do this and what are we going to do, what are we going to do? They have no idea. They have no plan. And to think that our governments are actually going to do anything that's going to work is just silly. But there is one plan that anybody can actually do to help this. See, there's only two people that prisoners can't stand. And you don't have to have been to prison to know this. It's kind of just common knowledge. There's two types of people that prisoners won't put up with. That's snitches and child abusers. Well, the thing is, the uh, Prophet Muhammad had a nine-year-old child bride when he was in his 50s. She was one of his nine or eleven wives. He also had slave girls. And you're probably thinking, and don't most people know this? Actually, no. It's not in all of their Qurans, and, but it is in a lot of their Hadiths. But what they do when they convert people especially Western men in these prisons, is they give them the English version, which does not tell them this. They are told that Muhammad was the most amazing man that ever lived and everybody needs to follow his ways. And then later on when they realize what they got their in themselves into, then they're told, oh, by the way, if you <laughs> leave Islam, <laughs> we're gonna chop your head off. Yeah, that kind of sucks. So an easy way that all of us can help to stop the radicalization of people in our prisons is right here. What is this? This is a brochure that anybody can print out and it has all of the verses that speaks of Muhammad's nine-year-old child bride and the things that he said about her. He actually uh, was going to marry her at six years old. It, it's hard to even talk about really, but um, as we know, YouTube AI, we uh, must be a little bit sarcastic. So, how would we stop the radicalization? Easy. You print a bunch of these up and you send them to prison. Or if you know anybody that is in faith ministries, you send them this. I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna put it, the link to it in the pinned comments. And 
See, once everybody starts finding this out in prison, or just even a handful of people, that's all it's gonna take, because they'll know what to do from there. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, I'm gonna be called an Islamophobe or this or that. Well, the prisoners don't care. Yeah, they're, they're not really big on politically correct, especially inside. But um, they don't wanna be um, fooled into following a false prophet that was also a child predator. Not only did he have a child bride, he also sucked on the tongues of little boys. I'll show you that verse right here. Um, he also owned many black slaves, and if you called him black, he would chop your head off. So, there's that. He would call Ethiopians raisin heads, and he was very white. Most people believe that Muhammad was, you know, dark-skinned, Arab. No, he was very white. They spoke about it many times, as you can see in these verses. In this one, we talked about the whiteness of his shins, the whiteness of his stomach, the whiteness of his underarms, the whiteness of his beautiful face. See, a lot of African Americans have been tricked into believing that Islam is the religion of their people. That's deception. He was very white. Uh, let me just read a couple of these um, verses. I'll, I'll start at the beginning. According to the Quran, Muhammad is the ideal pattern of conduct for Muslims. You have indeed, you have indeed in the apostate of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct for anyone whose hope for Allah and the final day and who engages much in the praise of Allah. Quran 33 21. Not to be rude, but a lot of the Quran does not make logical sense. And that might have a lot to do with Muhammad could not read or write. Um, but on, anyway, we're focusing on prison radicalization. Let's not get off topic. Like, I might speak of the feminist stuff, but one of the, uh, I'm sure y'all have all heard of Linda Sarsour. She goes around thinking, telling people that uh, Islam is a feminist religion. They are the best religion for feminists and they treat women like da da da. It's deception. Either she's just straight dumb or she hasn't read anything in the Quran. Anyway, let's go to this. So, one of the mo most disturbing facts about Islam's model of morality is that he had a sexual relationship with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl named Aisha. The evidence for Muhammad's marriage to the young Aisha is, a, is as strong as the evidence for just about any other fact in Islam. We have numerous traditions from Islam's most trusted historical sources reporting that Muhammad per, uh, proposed marriage when Aisha was six or seven years old and then he had a sexual intercourse with her, had sexual intercourse with her, consummated the marriage when she was nine. So Sahih al-Bakari, uh, 3896, narrated Hashim's father, Kadaj, died three years before the prophet departed to al Medina. He stayed there for two years or so. Then he wrote the marriage contract when, with Aisha when she was a girl of six years of age. And he consummated the marriage when she was nine years old. Shahi al-Bakari, 5158, narrated, The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated the marriage with her while she was nine years old. And she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Sunni al Dapa something. 2116, Aisha said, The apostate of Allah married me when I was seven years old. He had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. And it goes on and on from all of the verses so um that's how we can stop critical critical <laughs> prison radicalization with just one piece of paper and i'm serious this is going on on a massive scale and most people don't even know about it because they don't want to talk about it because then it's called islamophobia and all of these things voice of america i 
actually just did a segment saying how amazing it was that they were doing a prison outreach. And we all know what prison outreach means. They're going to convert them. Let me interrupt myself for just a second. I want y'all to think about what if Jesus had this going on? What would the what would Americans do? They would spread it everywhere. So why not this? Why don't they spread this? And before anyone says, but look at all the priests, look at all the pastors that have been affiliated with such things, there's a huge difference in a prophet, someone that came down, died on the cross for our sins, that was a sinless man. That's the man we follow. We follow the word in this book. We don't follow a flawed man. The writings, the word that we follow does not seek for revenge, for hate, for violence, for sexual exploitation. Those pastors and priests were flawed men that did very horrible things. And what did all Christians do? I wouldn't say all, but a majority. We called them out. True Christians called them out. What did the Catholics do in Chile and was it Bolivia when the Pope went down there? They rioted in the streets to make sure that he did something. We call our own people out. We don't hide it. But again, there's a huge difference in the followings of someone. This is who they're supposed to be following. And I haven't even gotten into the violent stuff. So, if you would like to help stop Islamic um, radicalization in prison, print these out. It will be in the pinned comments. And share them with your friends. And not only prisoners. You can share this at your local college. Your teenagers, local... Because that's where... Um, mainly, they, they like to get the younger people. Uh, you know, like 20s. 20s to about 40s and they they work really hard in the prisons and say it's all about peace and you know just praying and love and blah 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 and then when they hook them in then it's like oh by the way we're gonna chop your head off if you leave and that's really crazy that's besides all the jihad and everything and I'm not saying all Muslims a lot of Muslims don't even know about this and that's what is really sad it's sad that a lot of these things are hidden from them, or, um, or I, I don't know. I, I don't want to put every, I would never put everybody in one basket. I would never do that. But um, it does state in there, do not be friends with uh, Christians and Jews unless you have to. Meaning like if they live in a Western country, act like you're friends with them and all of these things. Again, I'm not saying they are all like acting. I'm saying that those are their absolute teachings, no, I mean, without a doubt. And that's why they have so much problem in the Western cultures and why we have these terrorist attacks and all of these things. But then our governments just bow down to all of this nonsense saying, oh, it's Islamophobia and all of these things. And in reality, I, I, I don't know what their deal is. I, I truly don't. Especially in Europe, where it's so, so bad. But, um, anyway, this will be in the pinned comments. You can read it. And 
like, share, and subscribe. Y'all have a wonderful night. Bye, guys.